Okay, everybody, I've got something really, really awesome to review today. I mentioned a while back, this is the new uh, 4K Mi Drone by Xiaomi. Uh, they had a 1080p version that they released uh, last year, and the 4K was something they always advertised, but it took them forever to finally uh, get this released. But I think it's well worth the wait because they fixed all the issues that plagued the 1080p version. And this films exceptionally well, and it's very, very competitively priced, around $500. If you check the video description, I have a coupon code and a link to the, to this, uh, the purchase link for this because this is a really, in my opinion, this is probably the uh, the best uh, aerial video photography drone you can get for around $500. I don't think there's one that does as much as this one does for this price point. Um, I have an Altel X-Star here also. This is my, was one of my main drone. And this is several hundred dollars more. I think this is pretty close to being on par with the Altel. As we can see here, they are, the, uh, the Mi drone is certainly bigger. It's like 450 frame size, where the Altel is smaller. I want to think it's th around 330, but don't hold me to that. I'm not real up to, uh, my, sometimes I forget the sizes on these frames, so I apologize if I'm wrong on that. Um, the, the, some of the new features they added, they have these new type of props that they, they just unlock. You just have to twist the, uh, the knob on top, and then it pops off. You put it back on, and then you just press down and twist it back to the lock, and the prop is on. Real easy to take these propellers off. You match them up to gray here and the gold here, gray and gold for the right uh, direction uh, and the right pitch angle for each uh, prop. Um, that's one of the newest features they had. They also upgraded this to five gigahertz for the FPV and controllers. So they don't use it on the Wi-Fi anymore. So they've been able to get much better range. The advertised range I've heard is quite a difference. Um, three to five kilometers, I've heard uh, two kilometers. But most people I think are getting, you know, in that two to three kilometer range on it, which is, you know, at least a mile. So it actually should have better range than my Altel. But I've not obviously tried to push it out that far. Um, let's see. On the bottom here, it looks like he's got these, you know, the me propellers here, which are, uh, you know, has me on them. It says that they are uh, 2212 kV. So um, I don't, I'm sorry, 2212 sized. I don't know the kV rating on these motors. Um, on the bottom here, it's got your egg shaped. Uh, uh, gimbal and camera. The gimbal works very well. It's a three axis gimbal. It takes a micro SD card right here in the uh, in the back. I've just got a regular Samsung card which seems to work pretty well for uh, um, recording even 4k footage. It's a class 10 card. It's a basic one. And there's a fan back here too. A cooling fan. It cools this uh, the camera while it's uh, operating to keep it all cool. There's uh, two uh, ultrasonic sensors here and then a monocular camera. And that's used to help determine where the ground is along with the barometers built in on the flight controller. I don't know if it uses that to help determine its height or not, um, if you would lose GPS, because the Altel, as you see here in my head cam, it's got uh, um, the same sensors, but it also can use it to help determine its uh, position if it were to use this GPS signal. So I think the Mi probably does that too, but I can't confirm that. It takes, a, it has a really nice battery. This is a, uh, a 5100 milliamp hour um, 4S LiPo, but it's one of these high voltage ones. It says it's up to 17.4 volts. I don't know if that's gonna show up here on the, on the camera or not. I'll try to get it on my other camera. But, um, the 17.4 is, uh, this can kick out more voltage than like my, uh, my Altel's uh, battery. So uh, this uh, is a really nice battery. It takes about an hour to hour and a half to charge depending on how much you drain the battery down. It comes with this uh, nice uh, desktop charger. Um, just plugs into the wall. You know, it doesn't work off any USB. It has this little, uh, these two little prongs, and these little prongs can go into either side here of the battery. So you can plug it in here, and then you plug it into the wall, and you charge it up. And it takes about an hour, an hour and a half to charge. The, uh, the quadcopter itself is rated at 
27 minutes flight time. I think if you were uh, just headed up and loiter, uh, and just stayed in position hold, you might get that, but it's probably closer to 20 minutes um, total time. I've not got an exact flight time on it, um, but uh, it, um, it has a very nice flight time overall, very comparable to my other, to my other drones in this class. Um, the legs here, these do fold down, which is a neat feature. This is very compact, so if you fold these down, you just push this little tab on the side in, if I can get it here, and the legs fold down, it comes very flat. Then at this point, you can uh, take this little, uh, I'll set it down here on the table, this little tab here, and the gimbal pops off. Take off the gimbal, and look, you've got a very compact drone. Take off your propellers, you can toss this in a backpack. backpack. So it is not you know, as portable as a Mavic, but it's certainly more portable than my Altel or a Phantom. So it's really a neat feature. And then you just pull the legs down, you don't have to do anything else, and you pull them down, they snap into place. Then you just, at that point, I'm gonna wire out of the way, uh, you just throw your gimbal back on. They are gonna make a, uh, a handheld gimbal that you can throw this uh, on and use it to film um, walking around yourself uh, for external use from the drone. So I'm really excited about that because then I can use that for uh, other video work that I do that's not drone related. So to put it back on, you just uh, you just get this little tab here into the back and you just uh, press it down and it should pop in there. It went forward and the gimbal's on, it's ready to go. Super easy to take on and off. The, uh, let's see, the controller here, I like this. It has these, oh, it kind of looks like a rabbit. Kind of tilt, has these tilt away antennas. It does only take uh, a, a phone. You cannot put a tablet into this. That's one of the uh, my biggest complaints is you can't easily get one here. If you see this Velcro here, this is, uh, I put this on here to try to attach my NVIDIA K1 tablet to it so I could do that. But for this review, I'm gonna use my cell phone. But you can tilt this forward and back and uh, get at the right angle for your FPV. Um, you get your basic controls, obviously. This middle switch is for return to home, and then back to your uh, GPS stabilized flying. To press, to turn this on, you can do a short press, long press. And now it's powered up. And that's, I think, how DJI uses it. And to turn it off, short press, long press. And the number of lights shows you how much it's charged. You charge it through the USB cable. I've got a uh, the Wi-Fi dongle in there now, but uh, you pr put that in there and plug it into a USB source and it powers it and char charges it up. Um, let's see here. The uh, Like I said, I have a Wi-Fi dongle in here because I'm going to uh, show you how to use the app with that. But for flying, I, I use the USB cable that comes with it because this USB cable, anytime you use a USB cable into your phone, you're going to uh, you know, have less lag. If you're using Wi-Fi, you're just introducing some latency so you could get more lag in your video feed. But if you want a cleaner look and not to worry about uh, wires, this is certainly an option for you. It's nice that they did include this. But I'll try to show you that here so I can move the phone closer without having to be uh, limited to a USB cable's distance. Uh, let's see, you're on the back, it's got these A and B buttons for doing your video and photo, but it's also built into the app. So, let's go ahead and we'll, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and go over the app briefly here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the, uh, the controller, and once you do that, then you just go into your, uh, into your settings here on the phone, and uh, go to your, choose your Wi-Fi network, and uh, it will pop up here and it's connected. MIRC, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's what you have to use. It already has that saved, so that's why it's already connected. So now that it's connected to it, we can go ahead and open up the app now. Okay, there we go. Let me make sure my screen brightness is all the way up so you guys can see this better. Now, you need to have the, the quadcopter powered up to do everything and see all the settings in it. Uh, I'm just gonna briefly go over this, but I don't wanna turn it on here and I need to take the propellers off for safety reasons. I'm just gonna go briefly over the app. Now, this is not the official app from the Google Play Store. I use that one to, um, uh, 
do my firmware upgrade to the gimbal and a flight controller and it worked perfectly but it does use usb tethering when you're connected by usb so then i was limited on my particular phone it will not then use my wi-fi now some other devices i heard that it does it may be a verizon limitation that i have with mine so i was not able to um use my wi-fi to download so i had to wait on my slow data connection with verizon where i live to download the uh, firmware update and, and then it applied it but it works perfectly fine but the official app on my phone tends to uh, disconnect from the the quadcopter the app doesn't crash it stays uh, fully functional but it disconnects or i lose the fpv feed so this is a slightly older chinese version of the app that has english translations and it works really well and just basically the limitations on it is it doesn't have gps maps for the united states where i'm located and um, it doesn't have the imperial system so you're limited to the metric system of a uh, you know meters which isn't a big that isn't a big deal to me i'm getting more and more used to that so i'm going to press connect later it'll let me and now you can see mainland china is what it's showing so I'm going to switch to the FPV feed, which is going to be great because I don't have the quadcopter powered up. You've got in here and you have settings, you know, connected aircraft, firmware upgrade, compass calibration. And then there's some things great out here, the GPS mode, VPU mode, adding mode, which is your altitude hold mode. You can unlock that, show more parameters. I always recommend you use your RC calibration at first to calibrate the sticks so that everything is, you know, it's all its endpoints correctly. Um, in this particular version of the app, the Chinese translated one, you want mode one. Mode two, which most people are used to on the English app, is from the official app, mode two is correct. On this one, if you get this one to use, you want to keep it on mode one because mode one is actually mode two. I know it's very confusing, but if you just get the one from the Play Store and it works fine, then mode two is what you want. Uh, let's see here. Right uh, scroll mold, that is telling you, do you want this? On the top right here, you've got these uh, the scroll here. This is what most people use for the EV adjustment because that's one of the limitations on the, the camera is you can only ex uh, change the exposure. You cannot ex uh, change ISO or shutter speeds and things like that. You're limited to just the EV. So you can tell, do you want to do that? Do you want to toggle between uh, GPS mode and altitude hold mode or do you want to adjust the brightness of the LEDs on the front which I did one thing I wanted to mention it has a, a red and a green on the back for right left and it's got white lights on the on the front of the drone so a little bit different color combination on the LEDs um, but I use it I have it set to you know adjust uh, EV it's not connected so that's why it's showing the wrong one you get your battery info which it doesn't have any up now but it shows all the cells and how much uh, batteries remaining on it uh, your gimbal calibration which you want to do on a level surface especially if it's a little bit off or it looks tilted I, I did it when i first powered it up the very first time and you have some flight records and flight um, app version history even offers drone insurance which is not in the official play store version of the app now when you're flying this thing um, it's going to give you your battery up here in the upper right and it's going to give you um, a meter here with how much battery is left. And this switches between the map and filming, your distance from home, your altitude, how many satellites you have. It's got um, US and GLONASS, the Russian. Uh, so you can get a lot of satellites and a very good lock. Your video, photo, so you switch between the two. It will film all the way up to 4K at 30 frames per second. It'll do a 2.5K at a 60 frames per second and then it'll do uh, 1080p at 100 frames and 60 and 30 and there's a whole bunch of other uh, frames per second so for this one we'll probably do it in 1080p at 60 so it syncs up with the both of the cameras I'm using here so we have the same frames per second but we'll probably at some point I may try to put some 4k footage linked to in the video description so you can see what this looks like in just um, raw 4k because it films very very nice really impressive so, um, one thing I want to mention too is when your battery percentage gets down to 15% here in the upper right, it is going to auto land. I don't like that. Hopefully in future firmware updates they will uh, decrease that because when it gets to 15% it's just going to try to land itself. You can't stop it, you can't control where it goes, but if you're out, if you're going to fly far away from yourself, make sure you do it with any battery. 
are drawn right at the very beginning. So don't uh, fly far away whenever your battery is low because it will want to land, especially if you're over water or something. So it's not, you know, it doesn't, uh, it, it won't fly back to home at 15. It will auto land itself. So that's, uh, I think that kind of covers all the basics on that. I'm hoping that I'm not forgetting. There's a lot to cover with this guy. I said the, uh, the upper left here on the controller is your gimbal tilt. Tilt all the way down or to go all the way level. You can't aim up with it at all. And of course this is a dial that lets you switch and your buttons on the back for your photo video. And I think that pretty much covers it all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these out and uh, fly both of them side by side between the uh, Mi drone and the Altel and get some footage of the Mi flying around and maybe some the Mi footage to the Altel to show you. Now I have an ND filter on the Altel. There's no uh, NDs available for this egg-shaped camera on this to attach to the Mi drone. So there could be a little difference in the uh, glare or stuff like that because the lack of ND filter. But the video call to me is on par with the Altel. So, I think that wraps up all the table reviews. So let's go ahead. I should mention too, I've got, we've got spare props too. <laughs> Almost forgot because these are proprietary. So you can't go out and buy some DJIs and throw on it. So uh, I'm glad they included an extra set of props because uh, you'd have to order these from China or something. You're not gonna be able to go out and pick these up at your local uh, Target or Best Buy or something. So, all right, I think I got everything now. Let's move, we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, flight review now. All right, we have the Mi drone here. I got it uh, bound up with the app. I am back to the official version from the Play Store to do a firmware upgrade. And I'm gonna see how it works now that it's done a firmware upgrade, how it works with the official app. We also have the Altel X-Star up here. We're gonna try to fly it around and get footage of each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off here. So let's do a uh, short and then a long press.
bring them down here. The all tail, we've already flown some, so its battery is low. I'm going to go ahead and land the me drone. It really flies nice. And then we'll go ahead and bring the all tail down. You can just hold the stick down on the me drone, and it will land. Once it lands, it will. Uh, Go ahead and turn off the motors. You don't have to do any unlocking sequence. So, overall, this is a really nice drone for the price. Hopefully, we'll do more, some more comparison videos. That was just a short demonstration there. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I stop recording the video. And we have that saved. All right, I'm going to go ahead and land the all tail. So, I appreciate you watching. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber and stay tuned for more videos. And have a good day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.